afternoon and thank you for coming along just so we can provide some advice to the South Australian community about changes that are happening for our cross-border arrangements. As a result of the situation uh, emerging in Victoria, with positive cases being identified in regional Victoria as well as Greater Melbourne, and the decision of the Victorian Government to institute a statewide lockdown, we are changing our cross-border arrangements with uh, Victoria to level six. This is changing from level six for a Victorian residents seeking to enter South Australia and returning South Australians being at level four, meaning they have to quarantine at home, to all of uh, those people traveling from Victoria being classified as level six, meaning they have to apply for an exemption to come in. This change is going to take effect as of 6 p.m. tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Sunday. We are doing this to provide people an opportunity who may be in Victoria at this time needing to return home, the ability to do so without creating excessive queues at the border. Those returning South Australian residents who are currently required to quarantine at home will be able to still return to South Australia and quarantine at home. However, they will be provided a quarantine sign and be given a personal direction by an authorised officer to display that sign on the front of the premises they're quarantining at for the 14 day period. As of six o'clock tomorrow night, returning South Australians will not be able to automatically come home and quarantine. They will have to apply for an exemption through SA Health. So that's the summary of the changes that are occurring and I'm happy to take questions. How would authorities describe the situation in Victoria at the moment? I think what we're seeing is uh, a challenge for the Victorian authorities uh, to get on top of the current positive cases and the news we're hearing about the number of positive cases that are active in the community is very concerning. I think we're learning or have learned already that the Delta variant uh, is very easily transmissible and a failure to act quickly and get on top of this uh, can result in extended lockdowns which has a devastating impact on the community not just from an economic point of view but from a social and general well-being point of view as well. The decision of the Victorian government to put a statewide lockdown in force, uh, I think compels us to take some stronger action to make sure we protect the South Australian community. At this point in time, we will be retaining the border bubble, the cross border bubble for those people who live 70 kilometres within Victoria. Uh, but that's uh, for this current point in time. We'll obviously continue to assess the situation in Victoria as it goes. Hopefully, uh, we'll see a reduction in case numbers and the lockdown arrangements in that state get on top of the current outbreak. Commissioner, there were two things last week. I was in court for the border breaches, uh, those two Colombian removalists. Uh, they were discovered by accident, literally, when they had a car accident. Uh, and then we heard the results of the investigation into the man in the basement, you know, of the uh, Grand Chancellor, who then went on went to went, went to the pub in South Australia. What changes have been made to ensure there aren't people, you know, who come from COVID affected areas? who can, you know, wander around the community. It was concerning to hear that people can come in in a light truck on an unauthorised removals job, and it was concerning to hear that a man can exit his hotel quarantine and go to the pub. So in terms of um, uh, people involved in the freight movement industry, there is a national undertaking to ensure that freight is not inhibited through, uh, in terms of its ability to uh, be distributed across Australia. Uh, we're a part of that national agreement. Uh, we do have strict protocols in place for the heavy vehicle industry to ensure the safety of the South Australian community and also those other jurisdictions that uh, freight drivers are moving into and out of. As with anything, we rely on people's uh, uh, willingness to comply with these instructions and overwhelmingly, the heavy vehicle industry is doing an excellent job in keeping their, their industry moving, uh, keeping our, stock, uh, our shelves stocked uh, and doing so as safely as possible. Uh, in terms of the Grand Chancellor, uh, as, as I spoke about last week, um, there were failures in relation to that particular situation. We've addressed those failures and I can provide a, a high level of assurance to the South Australian community that, that that sort of thing shouldn't happen again. And I would still remind people that we've been doing this now for uh, in the order of 18 months, managing people through our many hotels. This is the only breach of this type and we've accommodated over 22,000 people. There's no excuse for what happened but we have corrected that. Any, any, any change on the border though? Uh, any change to like border arrangements to prevent, you know, make sure that people's permits are being checked? This Colombian pair didn't have a permit. Look, we can't, uh, we can't verify every single person that uh, seeks to cross the border. We have police officers at every major checkpoint and even the, the secondary roads coming into South Australia. Uh, we have surveillance and mobile patrols uh, checking other uh, possible crossing areas. But notwithstanding the a number of resources we have out there and the positions that, that we're occupying, 
there is still the possibility for people to uh, sneak across um, and we are having some success in identifying those people but this is the reason why we have to maintain a high level of vigilance notwithstanding the efforts we're putting into place to maintain strong borders there is the possibility that some people may find their way through to South Australia and that's why we have these restrictions on our local community as well as the border arrangements. How precarious is the situation with the border bubble at the moment and what would it take in terms of cases in Victoria to get that bubble closed? I think what we'd be seeing, uh, well firstly let me say that uh, people who are living in the cross-border community have done an excellent job in supporting us by complying with the, uh, the arrangements we've put in place. It's in their interest obviously to be able to come into South Australia and conduct business, uh, participate in normal lifestyle activities. Um, but if we were to see uh, seeding of COVID-19 into Victoria in very close proximity to the border bubble, then I think we'd have to reconsider our position. And as with everything, uh, we are monitoring this on a daily basis. Uh, there are no changes proposed for the border bubble at the moment, but I can't say that will be the case going forward. And we'll advise that community as quickly as possible if we have any concerns. So just to clarify, would, would the COVID case have to come within the border bubble? Because obviously yesterday we saw with Shepherd and uh, cases uh, blew up very, very quickly. Uh, you're right. Shepparton, uh, I think, has additional new cases being reported today. Uh, Shepparton is not in any reasonable proximity to our uh, cross-border communities. Uh, it really depends on the circumstances and uh, it's, it's too difficult for us to forecast exactly what those steps would be that would see us uh, moving in relation to our position on the cross-border communities. But we are monitoring closely to make sure that we're making the best decisions for South Australians. Any concern about movement from far, I know the blue skies might be low, but movement from far west to New South Wales Aboriginal communities across into the less populated areas of northern South Australia? Well, that's something we're also watching. Uh, yeah, our Indigenous communities are vulnerable communities and uh, we, have, uh, 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 we, have position, we have a position we take in relation to making sure we do as much as we can to protect vulnerable communities. At this stage, there is no indication that there is any immediate threat but we'll continue monitoring to make sure that if there is any indications that need to be acted upon, we do so quickly, so we minimise the risk or minimise the impact of that seeding. The protests that we're seeing today in Melbourne and Sydney, what impact does that have on our borders and going forward as well? Well, the steps we're taking now are strengthening our borders. So firstly, for New South Wales, we have very strong border arrangements in place, and the people who are residing in New South Wales are supposed to be uh, in lockdown at the moment. I think it's reasonable to suggest anybody who's out protesting is not complying with the lockdown conditions. So it elevates our concern about the potential for that uh, Delta strain to continue spreading through the New South Wales community. And whilst it's there, it's a, a threat for us in South Australia. Uh, it will be very difficult for people to come from New South Wales into South Australia given our border arrangements. Uh, New, uh, Victoria as well, with their protest activity, um, it, it certainly heightens our concern. It's the reason we're taking these, it's not the only reason, but the, the fact that they do have uncontrolled spread of COVID-19 in Victoria is the reason we're taking this next step to level six for Victoria. And concerning that you had a thousand protesters as well here today. Oh look, uh, my advice is the protest in South Australia was uh, very peaceful, it was orderly, it was conducted in accordance with what we would expect from a COVID-19 point of view. Uh, there were no issues from a policing point of view whatsoever. I would suggest the distinction between South Australia, Victoria and New South Wales is that those two other jurisdictions are supposed to be in lockdown and people who are protesting aren't complying with the conditions set by the governments and they're breaking the law. Do you intend to have a look at uh, uh, crowd capacity at Adelaide Oval between now and next weekend? Are you talking about finals football? For finals football, yes. Yeah, look, uh, the, the negotiations regarding uh, the potential for finals football in South Australia is uh, conducted between SA Health, the AFL and the Adelaide Oval Stadium Management Authority. It's not something that directly involves the South Australia Police, other than us providing an assurance that we can provide whatever security arrangements are necessary for the safe movement of people within that precinct. Will the exemption process for from six o'clock tomorrow for retaining South Australia be reasonably stringent or can like, will people be able to just enter if you're a returning resident or no, they will make a criteria? In the past, we have been reasonably generous with returning residents and we've given them quite a bit of latitude in terms of their quarantining obligations. Uh, our experience with New South Wales has shown us that the risk from Delta is so significant that we, we do apply a more stringent um, exemptions process and people need to be able to demonstrate that they can safely quarantine without risk of infecting other family members or the broader community. And that's one of the reasons why we are insisting upon people displaying a sign on their premises that indicates that there is a person quarantining inside. That's not to say the person has COVID-19, 
that they're quarantining because they've been in an area with, which increases the likelihood that they may have contracted the virus. We have a 14 day quarantine period and we don't want anybody inadvertently moving into those premises uh, during that quarantine period. So the sign is, uh, I think, a very important tool for us to remind the occupants of their obligations, but also give prior warning to anyone approaching the house that there is a person there quarantining. Can you elaborate on that sign requirement? Have you um, developed some requirements about where it must be displayed? Will it be issued by SAPOL or will it be on the uh, resident to print design? Uh, by and large, they're either is issued by SAPOL police officers or authorised officers from SA Health. Um, people will be given specific instructions about how to display the sign and where it should be. So each, each person will be briefed personally by an authorised officer in relation to their requirements with the sign. Is there likely to be any changes with Melbourne Airport? Uh, there, that is a potential, depending on what we see over the next few days. At this point in time, it is still permissible to transit through Melbourne Airport, providing you minimise your exposure within the airport precinct and you're not there for any extended period and you don't leave the airport. Uh, we will monitor the situation and if we deem it necessary to restrict people from travelling through Melbourne Airport, then we will take that step. We did take that step with Sydney Airport because of the inherent risks associated simply by being in the, in, in the jurisdiction of New South Wales. Much like we got this over the Northern Territory just a couple of days ago, do you expect tonight it will be reasonably busy for people to try to get home before that 6pm deadline? Well, the 6pm deadline is for Sunday, so people have over 24 hours now to you know, make their arrangements and travel back to South Australia. Um, we're hopeful people take advantage of that and we don't see a rush. We would encourage people, if there is any congestion on the road, to drive safely, be patient, appreciate that the steps we're taking are to protect the interests of the South Australian community and all South Australians. That includes them. So if you are travelling to South Australia through the Victorian border checkpoints, please uh, show a bit of patience, uh, be tolerant with the people around you and remember your obligations when you come through in terms of making sure you filled out that cross-border application form before arriving. Okay, Thank thanks you. ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks, Chris.